national needs and children's needs are met in this wartime nursery. Parents and guardians bring their children to a place they can trust. It's a nursery school run by the Wellington Free Kindergarten. The playground is designed to develop healthy bodies and plenty of confidence. With growing independence, the children wash themselves for lunch. They're fed on fresh and dried fruits, honey and fresh vegetables. And my, was that good! With the exception of a rest period, the children are busy right through the day. Some produce really modern paintings, while others take more homely courses, always with an eye to the future. Then there's music, and Edith, unperturbed by her visitors, plays right through the book, from the back to the front. Toys are put away. With words and pictures, story time begins. And while mum and dad are at their war jobs, the youngsters enter into a world of imagination. These children have no homes during working hours, but no one could say they're neglected. In this furnace is molten metal. Yesterday it was cold scrap iron. After 24 hours firing, it is now hot enough for recasting and is poured from the furnace into a ladle. From the ladle, the molten metal is run into molds set out on the foundry floor. In the molds, it quickly cools. It becomes hard metal again, but this time in the shape of shells for mortar bombs. But these are only the rough castings. They have a long way to go before they become finished mortar bombs. This work is typical of what is being done in the foundries and factories up and down New Zealand. Work that shows how New Zealand firms have switched from peace to war conditions. A switchover that was successfully made in spite of serious difficulties. Shortage of material, shortage of labour and shortage of time. For the men too, war brought difficulties. In peacetime they did 101 jobs. Now it's the same job every day and all day, and half the night as well. For the last 12 months, they've kept at it. Now they're down to another year's work, and going right ahead. They won't let up until Germany's surrendered and Japan folds up. But the women have been affected most of all. They've had to take on men's jobs, jobs that in normal times were considered beyond them. But they've done the work, and they're still doing it. They're not only keeping up the pace, but the pressure as well. One way and another, New Zealand men and women have shown that given the tools, they can do the job. In their standard of production, they're doing all that was asked of them. In numbers, they're exceeding all hopes, and it's big quantities of good quality that are winning this war. Coming in on the waters of Auckland Harbour today, this clipper ship is bridging the Tasman in more ways than one. It brings to New Zealand the Honourable T.G. Dalton, first High Commissioner for Australia in New Zealand. This is an exchange of importance in the development of trans-Tasman relations. A year ago, we sent our first High Commissioner to Australia. Accompanied by Mrs. Dalton, Mr. Dalton steps ashore. The future will hold many problems for Australia and New Zealand. Solving them will need a sound understanding of each country's difficulties and intentions. In Wellington, Mr. Nash and other government officials are here to meet Mr. Dalton. When this war began, New Zealand and Australia stood alone in the Pacific. We went forward together. In peace years to come, there will be more opportunities for united action. Shortly after his arrival, we interviewed Mr. Dalton. When I was about to leave Canberra, Mr. Curtin, our Prime Minister, and the trusted leader of the Australian people asked me to convey to the government and the people of New Zealand his very best wishes and goodwill. This I gladly convey to you all. Since we arrived here, my wife and myself have been greeted with every courtesy and kindness. And we realise, much to our pleasure, that we are going to make many friends in your good country. Incidentally, I come from the state of Tasmania, the smallest state of the Commonwealth, but akin in many respects to New Zealand. 
I regard it as an honour and a privilege to represent Australia here. And we are convinced that we two dominions must keep in step in all matters affecting the war and the prosecution of the peace. Australia and New Zealand have held steadfast with Great Britain in the dark days. And together, we, with confidence, will face the many problems of the future. Our sailors, soldiers and airmen have added many pages to the illustrious history of our race. Their dauntless courage has won the admiration of the world. Let us be worthy of our fighting men. And let us realize how little we have to give up here on the home front. Very little sacrifices indeed. But rest assured that those sacrifices will not have been made in vain.